Daniil Medvedev is currently the world number one tennis player in the men's category of the Association of Tennis Professionals. Daniil is one of the few tennis greats with a powerful first serve and along with his energetic and aggressive style of play, he has been able to claim for himself 13 ATP single titles and become the first and only player ever to beat the world's top three ranked players on his way to winning the 2021 US Open. But what makes Daniil really special in the world of tennis is his remarkable personality. He is very blunt and can get really riled up during games, making for an interesting coverage. This is why he is known around the tennis world as the villain of tennis. He is surely the villain in the story of Novak Djokovic right now after surpassing him in the ATP rankings, who held the top spot for a record 361 weeks. Nevertheless, Danny is not a villain in the story of everyone. For his family and fans, he is certainly a hero. Let's take a close look at his family and early life before he became a world number one. Family Background Early Life Danny was born Daniil Sergeyevich Medvedev as an eight-month premature baby on February 11, 1996 in Moscow, Russia, to Russian parents, Sergei Medvedev and Olga Medvedev. He has two older sisters named Yulia, who is 12 years his senior, and Yelena, who is eight years older than them. They generally keep a low-key life, and we know very little about them. But Danny, on the other hand, we know quite a lot. For example, we know he is a white Caucasian of Russian nationality who certainly speaks Russian but is also proficient in English language and French. He is six foot six inches tall and could pass easily for a basketball player. However, fate would have him choose tennis instead. The right-handed tennis maestro was six years old when he was first introduced to tennis, but at this time he was still receiving swimming lessons with a group of other kids that couldn't get their legs to touch the bottom of the pool. So in one of his swimming lessons, his mother was watching her son get acquainted with swimming when her eyes first caught an advertisement for group tennis lessons. Feeling that this might suit the young child better, she brought it up to her husband who nodded positively and advised Danny to enroll. Danny agreed to yet another lesson, and his first tennis coach became Ekaterina Kriochkova, who thankfully was also a coach to former professional tennis player Vera Zvonareva. So this meant that Danny was going to be receiving the best, and many years later, it appears that he did receive the best. But aside from tennis and swimming lessons, Danny also took classes in music and harpsichord, and also indulged some time in chess, drawing, and languages like English and French. But it was tennis that really possessed his heart, as he went from one junior tournament to another, trying to make a mark and develop as he went. But in spite of his enthusiasm, his junior career was not so glamorous, as he never won any Grand Slam titles and only went as far as the second round in the 2013 Junior Wimbledon Tournament. It would, however, seem like Danny only occupied his time with tennis and other recreational activities, but that is not the case. He was also an academic buff, even though he is still considered as a dropout. In terms of academics, he studied physics and math at a specialized school, graduated very early, and enrolled in the Moscow State Institute of International Relations to study economics and commerce. However, soon after, he dropped out to focus primarily on tennis, but he didn't forego school entirely as he got himself a diploma as a coach from the Russian State University of Physical Education, Sport, Youth, and Tourism. He then moved to France to train at the Antibes Tennis Academy, and during his time there, he became even more grounded in French speaking. The amazing thing is, all this while his parents had stuck by him lovingly, making countless sacrifices on his behalf. But who are his parents really? What are their stories? All right, let's meet Mr. and Mrs. Medvedev, father and mother. Mr. Sergei Medvedev was a computer engineer who was an entrepreneurial genius that built his own business of building and construction material cells between the periods of the mid-1980s to the early 2010s. Danny's parents were very intentional about his education and upbringing and assured he got the very best. They had said once in an interview with Sports Express that, if we stopped at something in terms of his studies, we tried to find the best institutions, and in that best institution, the strongest teacher. If we went to study chess, we went to the Petrosian School. We felt that to be in a non-serious place and with a non-serious teacher was a waste of time. As a rule, parents look for somewhere closer, just so they don't have to sit at home. We had a different approach. But as she admits, they also had to lie to his school to keep them from knowing about his sports activities outside of his academics. She also said to Sports Express, At school, we did not say he was in sports because that was a serious school. If he had to travel to play a tournament, we were going to the doctor in order to get a medical certificate. We had to organize all those things. So while he was at school or training, I had to cook something and make thousands of calls in many different places, getting visas, book a hotel, and buy tickets. 
Olga and Sergei Medvedev were fully into Danny's dream of becoming a tennis star. As already noted, their move to France was basically initiated by Danny's interest in becoming a professional tennis player. They had sold their family home to necessitate the move and taken along all their property. In France, the parents became quite serious with his tennis dreams and wouldn't even allow him to worry himself about any other activities. Here, the father controlled the finances and the mother took care of the logistics. The mother admitted once how strict his schedule was during this time, saying, In France, there was a rise at 6. At 7.30, practice already started. By the time I left, I had to get my bags of clothes and proteins ready. Then my dad takes him to the training session. After that, I had to go home fast, which was about 10.30 or 11 o'clock. By that time, of course, I had to have dinner ready. Danny even had time to sleep and rest between workouts. He went to the second one fresh and full, not thinking about everyday problems. He was completely free from all matters except tennis. Clearly, his reign is not attributed to only his talents and hard work alone, but also some superhero moves of dedication and love exhibited by his parents. Another very important aspect of Danny's life, without any doubt whatsoever, is his wife Daria Medvedev. Wife, born Daria Cherneskova. Daria is a graduate of journalism from the Moscow State University, who also played tennis but only up to junior levels because of persistent injuries. The meeting of the two lovebirds dates back long ago when Daria was only 13 years old. They had met while Daria and her team were dining at a cafe close to the local tennis courts. Danny was playing that day and Daria went to watch him. Danny admitted once that he appreciates the fact that she understands tennis. In his exact words, he had said, It's great that she understands tennis. Perhaps it's not easy to get used to it when you don't understand anything in tennis. It helped me become better as a person and a player. Anyway, a few years later in 2014 they began dating, and in 2017 they started living together in Monte Carlo, Monaco. Only a year later in 2018, they tied the knot in a low-key marriage ceremony. Afterwards, Danny said, Before I proposed, I had been on the 65th place in the ranking, and then in 10 months I've won two major tournaments and entered the top 10. We have significantly rebuilt our life. We work for each other. I earn money, and Dasha helps me to earn more. Thank you, Daria. Now, just before they celebrated their third anniversary in 2021, Danny was given a special gift for winning his first Grand Slam title, the 2021 US Open. And after this title, he had this to say, It's the third anniversary for me and my wife. During the tournament, I couldn't think of a present. So when I went in the final, I thought, I need to find a present fast. When I won, the only thing I thought, if I lose, I have no time to have a present. So I have to win this match. I love you, Dasha. And it looks like more is going to come for Danny and all those who have helped him get to where he is today. Expectations for 2022. He is currently the world number one in the ATP ranking with 8,615 points ahead of Novak Djokovic, who has 8,465 points. And he is only getting started.